All right, welcome to our section on portfolio optimization. In this series of videos, I'm going to first talk about the standard portfolio objectives and techniques that uh, are ubiquitous in this industry. And then in a follow on video, I'll talk about the basics of modern portfolio theory. And then finally, I'll give you an example of modern portfolio theory in practice. So let's get started. So, uh, in this particular video, I'm going to really focus on standard portfolio objectives and how portfolio managers achieve, achieve these objectives. Uh, we'll talk about the, uh, you know, ways that we calculate portfolio returns. And then we'll also talk about some of the most basic things in all of portfolio management, like calculating weights and volatility. All right. So let's talk about some of the most popular portfolio management techniques, or rather we'll talk about the difference between the traditional approach and MPT, modern portfolio theory. Now, the traditional approach to portfolio management has been around, I mean, as long as portfolio management as a discipline has been around. Basically, you build a balanced portfolio. Uh, if you're building an equity portfolio, you include a bunch of different uh, stocks across probably different industries, ge different geographic areas. The key here is industry and geographic diversification. Uh, you'll see why that's important. Uh, obviously, if you had me for 310, you know exactly where we're going with this uh, in terms of diversification. Uh, but this traditional approach, it tends to focus on uh, investing in well-known, low-risk companies. And these portfolios historically tracked some big well-known indexes, uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average, S&P 500, NASDAQ Composite, etc. Now, the main technique that we're going to focus on in this set of videos is that of the modern portfolio theory. This is, if, if someone were to ask you, what is the first modern theory in, invest, in investments, the answer would be modern portfolio theory. In this technique, essentially what you're doing is you're maximizing some risk adjusted return, basically the portfolio's sharp ratio. And you're doing it using three different pieces of data, expected returns, security volatilities, and the correlations between the securities. And that's, that's kind of the big heart of this, of this set of videos, being able to go through this entire process. Now, uh, I thought it'd be a good idea before we actually get into modern portfolio theory to, you know, give you a sense of what the traditional approach to investments is. And this approach still exists today. Uh, I mean, we kind of use it in our, our student managed investment front fund, uh, but to give you a sense of how the traditional approach works, essentially what a portfolio manager and their team are doing is they're identifying industries and geographic areas where there's potentially undervalued securities and uh, making investments in those areas. So here we have the uh, primary 11 sectors of any economy. So basic materials, communication services, healthcare, etc. And uh, what we have is a benchmark and probably an industry or uh, sorry, uh, an index benchmark. And here we can see a breakdown for one particular fund. So this fund, the Growth Fund of America, they've put 3.16% of their portfolio into basic materials or stocks in the basic materials sector, whereas the benchmark portfolio only has about 1.5%. So basically, this fund has overweighted basic materials. Uh, there's probably a good reason for this. Maybe they see some significant upside here, whereas Oh, say down here with industrials, they are underweighting industrials relative to the benchmark, probably because they see some uh, downside risk. Maybe a lot of the firms in industrials are potentially overvalued, or maybe they recognize some headwinds in this industry, etc. So the traditional approach to fund management involves active management and determining which industries or sectors and geographic areas you want to overweight or underweight. Now, pretty much every portfolio that exists that's professionally managed is going to have some objective. Uh, some objectives that we see in this industry are growth oriented. So if we were to look at a proxy or a, a prospectus for a, di a particular mutual fund, their objective might be something like long-term price appreciation. And with that objective would come investing in stocks that are most likely to have very high returns in the future. 
Other portfolios, particularly the ones that invest primarily in equity are going to have, or, or even invest in bonds, are going to have some other objectives, maybe like income oriented approaches. So uh, the focus here would be investing in stocks or bonds that have a that pay out high dividends or coupon payments. Now, regardless of the objective that we have, uh, generally, we want to invest in or develop portfolios that are, as we say, efficient, meaning that our portfolio has the highest risk adjusted return. And in portfolio management, we have a couple different ways to measure this. You know, we'll talk about others in about two weeks. But uh, for our purposes today, the most prominent formula to determine the, the you know efficiency of a portfolio is going to be the Sharpe ratio, the return on the portfolio R sub P minus the return on the risk-free rate, say a one-year T bill, all divided by the standard deviation of a portfolio. So. Of, of your portfolio, so sigma sub p. All right, now a couple additional things uh, in this video. I do want to make sure that you're, you know, we're all on the same page as far as calculating returns, weights, all the, all the stuff that we'll need uh, going forward in this week's material. Uh, to calculate the return on a portfolio, it's really just the weighted average of the securities return. So if we have a security that has uh, specific return, we multiply that by the weight of that security at the start of the uh, time period, and then we sum up all of those weights times returns. And that's how we get our portfolio return. We should also make sure we know how to calculate our weights. Uh, so weights are just calculated as the initial allocation to the asset divided by the total initial allocation across the entire portfolio. So uh, for example, if we start a portfolio, or if we start the period with a portfolio that has $30,000 in it and 10,000 are in Apple stock and 20,000 are in Google stock, uh, the weight to Apple would be 10,000 divided by 30,000 or 33% and the weight of Google would just be one minus that. So 20 divided by 30,000. So there we go. Okay, let's try a simple example using Excel because uh, in class we are going to use Excel a lot this week. So I, I want to make sure that uh, we know how to use some basic functions to speed up the process or the calculations. So in this example, we've got two securities, the Russell 2000 ETF and a gold ETF, the Spider Gold Shares. And we've got our initial allocation of 4,000 and 2,000 and our return over that period that starts, you know, let's say, you know, at, at the start of the year is 4% for the Russell and 2% for the gold ETF. Let's calculate our return. So pretty straightforward. We're just taking, first off, we need to get our weights. So our weight of the Russell 2000 is just the initial investment divided by the total investment in the entire portfolio. So 4,000 divided by 6,000. And we multiply that by the 4% return. And for the gold, we just you know, it's one minus that. So 2,000 divided by the 6,000 total. And so the return on our portfolio is just the weighted average or 3.33% or 3.3 repeat or 0.033 repeating. Now in Excel, pretty straightforward. I think I could probably show you a couple of functions that will speed up your uh, calculations. So let me just work this in Excel. Uh, First things first, whenever you are calculating the weighted average portfolio return, you want to know, well, first the weights, but to get the weights, you need the total allocation. So we'll start off with the sum function. That's our 6,000. And then our weight is just the initial allocation of that security or to that security divided by the total allocation. There we go. And if I wanted to copy this formula down, I could put a dollar sign in front of the denominator and that would lock in our denominator uh, below. So notice what I just did there. I took this and I dragged it down by clicking on the bottom right and it copied the formula down. Uh, these dollar signs, they lock in this particular cell. Uh, so now all I have to do is take my weight times the return in the period. And again, I'll copy that formula down. And then uh, lastly, I'll just calculate the weighted portfolio return. So I could do, I could just do the sum of these, or I could do something a little more complicated and just disregard this weight times return. I could just do 
a sum product where I just highlight my weights, highlight my returns, and basically what the sum product function does is it multiplies the first op observation in an array by the first observation in the other array. So it would be 0.66 times 4% plus 0.33 times 2%. And we get the exact same value that we got the other two methods. So there we go. Okay, so now we know how to calculate weights and returns. Uh, really, the last thing I need you to know how to do is calculate the portfolio standard deviation. This is the, I mean, you got to know how to do this. So what you're looking at is the calculation for the standard deviation of a two stock portfolio. And we're going to use this in class uh, significantly because we are, I am going to ask you guys to optimize a portfolio in class. Uh, but basically uh, what we're doing is we're volatility of our portfolio is dependent on the volatility of the assets in that portfolio. So uh, stock one is going to have return volatility, stock two is going to have return volatility, but they are going to move together to some extent. And the extent to which they move together is the covariance between the two stock returns. Uh, so our formula here is just the weight of stock one squared times the variance uh, plus the weight of stock two squared times the variance of stock two. Uh, plus two times weight of stock one times weight of stock two times covariance. Uh, I do have another formula down here, and the only difference between these two is that you know our covariance is nothing more than the standard deviation of stock one times standard deviation of stock two times the correlation coefficient between stocks one and two. So I'm just gonna hope that you guys remember this stuff. Uh, but covariant or sorry, correlation is essentially nothing more than scaled covariance. Your correlation is just covariance divided by standard deviation times standard deviation. Okay, now let's take a look at an example. Uh, you've got a portfolio consisting of two assets, GM and Ford stock, uh, calculate the portfolio standard deviation. So I have this in Excel, so I'll move over to that. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we've got our weights, we've got our covariance, and for good measure, I got the correlation. Uh, we have also got some standard deviations. Let's calculate our portfolio standard deviation. And just to make it so we can see everything here, I'm going to move this over here. Okay, so we're going to use that formula that I just showed you. So uh, I guess it might help if I put it there. Okay, so this is the formula, formula we're working with. We know our weights, we know our standard deviations, and we can either use our covariance or our correlation. So let's get it done. So equals square root of weight of stock one squared times the variance of stock one, which is just standard deviation squared, plus the weight of stock two squared times the standard deviation of stock two squared, uh, plus two times weight of stock one times weight of stock two times covariance. And there we go. Portfolio standard deviation is, well, Usually it's going to be between these two standard deviations. So there we go. Okay, I do have one final point I want to make in this video, and that is uh, as we add securities to our portfolio, the formula for calculating our portfolio standard deviation is going to get more and more complicated. Uh, you know, in this class, and certainly on a CFA level one exam, uh, the most you're going to see is uh, the most you're going to be asked is to calculate a standard deviation of a two asset portfolio. But I mean, in the real world, we can have 25 asset portfolios, 50 asset portfolios, 500 asset portfolios. Uh, basically, the formula here uh, is what you're looking at down here. This is our, uh, our actual formula for portfolio standard deviation. It's just the sum of our weight squared times variances of our stocks plus the sum of all of the combinations where we have uh, a stock I and a stock J. So we just take two times weight of stock I times weight of stock J times uh, standard deviations of the two times the correlation of stock uh, of or between stocks I and J. So what I'm trying to get across here is that once you get past a two stock portfolio, when you calculate the standard deviation, this formula really blows up. I mean, I, I used to 
you know, in classes, I'd, I'd show students this class and I'd look for that reaction and the dread that they might have to use this formula on an exam used to <laughs> be kind of funny. Eh, basically, I would never ask you to, uh, you know, use this formula on an exam, but, you know, you definitely should have, uh, you know, you should know how to calculate the standard deviation of a two asset portfolio. Okay, so let's summarize what we talked about in this video. Uh, so we started off talking about the difference between traditional approach to fund management and modern portfolio theory, uh, whereas MPT is very, uh, it, it's primarily in base, uh, based on your returns, your standard deviations, and your correlations between assets. Uh, the traditional approach is a bit more uh, loosey-goosey if you want to think about it that way. You know, different managers might have different techniques for determining what they invest in. They're typically going to invest in uh, well-known companies, uh, blue chip companies, uh, etc. Uh, we did also talk about efficient portfolios. And when we talk about efficient portfolios, what we're really talking about is portfolios where we have a, a high risk adjusted return. In our next video, we're going to talk about modern portfolio theory, and our focus there is to maximize the Sharpe ratio. And, you know, that's, that's true of most efficient portfolios. You want to optimize a variable like the Sharpe ratio. Uh, we talked about a couple calculations, uh, specifically returns and weights. The return on a portfolio is just the weighted average of the returns on the securities. And then the standard deviation of a portfolio uh, requires us to know the weights, standard deviations, and correlation or covariance of each asset with each other. So with, I'm, with that, I'm going to stop here. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.